Hello world, this is Jeffrey, JGB146 Blake with Team Level 5, coming to you with another deck profile. This is over the Blastoise GX deck that I posted the list for on Monday. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of different ways to build it as well. The uh, reason we're only getting it now is because I wanted to wait, since I got the list from Andrew Mahone, I wanted to wait until he had had time to put out a video on YouTube of his stream session playing it. So uh, check it out. Go to YouTube. Uh, I'll put the link in here alongside the video post. Uh, everywhere that I post it, but um, YouTube, look for Tricky Jim. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and delve into the list itself. Again, this build is exactly the way Mahone had it, and then we'll talk about changes. So, first off, scratch my ear because it itches. Sorry. Uh, first off, we've got Mew. Uh, Mew is there, Bench Barrier, and Side Power. Um, Mew's a great card, um, and particularly in any deck that is susceptible to spread, Mew helps. So you want to have a large bench with Blastoise most of the time, so if you're up against a spread deck, Mew's going to help you there. You don't want Picaram to take a four prize turn. So, Mew. Shut down Picaram's GX from taking out a Lele, or you know, doing a follow-up hit that gives them four prizes. It's all the reason we play Mew, uh, but it's a pretty solid reason. There are occasional times where you don't get knockout either intentionally or otherwise, and Mew can follow up from a hit that didn't quite get there and take one or multiple knockouts, which is also very good. Lele is Lele. We play it for Wonder Tag. You can use Energy Drive, you can ramp energy onto Lele using the Blastoise, the baby Blastoise methods that we'll talk about, but you're mostly using it for the Wonder Tag ability. Vulpix helps you get out Pokemon with the beacon attack and also paves the way for Alola Ninetales, uh, which lets you get out two item cards. That's the entire reason we're playing the Ninetales line, is to use the Mysterious Guidance ability. Part of me would like to find a way to, you know, play a Fairy Energy in here as well. Um, if we did it as a Rainbow Energy, it would technically work for Blastoise GX's attacks, it would not work with the uh, powerful Squall ability, which is the reason I haven't tried anything further to make that work. Um, and then Articuno is our little sort of saving grace that lets the stage two nature of this deck actually pay off. Because what you can do against a lot of decks is put Articuno out front, attack with them and you're putting energy on your bench similar to what we did in Quagnag and um, so you're building up energy and you're also preventing them from knocking out your unevolved uh, or your middle tier evolutions uh, from doing that so he's helpful very helpful he's a good guy that bird okay Squirtle the free retreat here is awesome you definitely want to play this Squirtle from Tap and Team Up, the one with Free Retreat, not the other one. And you, Solid Shell is also great. Um, again, we have Mew in here to stop some spread, but if you don't have Mew out, Solid Shell means that uh, any actual spread decks are doing no damage to War Turtle for the turn or two or however long you end up having War Turtle in play. And. Um, yeah, that's that. Obviously, Blastoise already has the ability to prevent um, any damage from those same spread decks, but uh, you know, our biggest concern with spread is that they're going to take out the Squirtle 
And also I've seen in Pablo's video, he may have lost to a spread deck that was able to pull off a damage change uh, play, which obviously Mew would have totally prevented from being a thing. Um, I touched on Blastoise, let's talk about, well I touched on the GX, let's talk about the baby first. So, baby Blastoise came out and team up, some people may have seen him in some, like, Waylord based decks, maybe when I know Clayton, shout out to Clayton Bacon, uh, Clayton played a Waylord Blastoise deck that made some waves at Collinsville. Uh, other than that, I don't think Blastoise saw a lot of play outside of the theme deck arena, but the powerful Squall ability is pretty awesome. Uh, it lets you look at the top six of your cards and any water energies, any number of water energies, you could have up to six and you attach all of them and it stacks so if you have multiple Blastoise out, you could you know, potentially attach 12 or even 18 energies in a single turn. You probably never get quite that far, but you do end up with a lot of energy in play, and that's the key. That's the important part. And then we have Blastoise GX, who I still don't understand people that are sleeping on this card. It is literally the same attack as Blacephalon GX, who ruled the format for a while. Except better in two ways. One, the damage ramps faster. You four energies takes out a stage two of almost any size and some of the lower HP tag teams. Five energy takes out I think literally every Pokemon we see. It's not hard to get five energy in play. And you have 270 HP as long as your ability is active. It's nuts. Our GX attack is kind of meh. Because you don't want to waste an attack attaching energy when you have all these other options to attach the energy faster. But... So what? You know, that that's another reason that I, I'd look to find something else to put in here. It has a more relevant GX attack. I haven't come up with anything yet. I'll probably get there. We play a one-up energy recycler. We're mostly going to be pulling our energy back into our deck over and over. But it does happen that something gets knocked out, knocked out that has energy on it. Occasionally you try to you know, limit that by discarding energy off of the things that you expect to have. Not discarding, but removing energy and shuffling it back off of the Pokemon you expect to get KO'd. And you know, spreading it around well. When you're attaching the blast orders, can also help with that. But occasionally it'll happen. Sometimes you'll have to discard it early on. Energy Recycler is good for that. We play two Nest Balls, which when combined with the three Brooklyn Hills, makes it pretty easy to get out most of our basics. We play four Rare Candy. Uh, we only played one more portal, so of course we want to play those Rare Candy to get things back. We play a Rescue Stretcher, just one right now. Uh, timer Ball is a two count. I'm not sold on Timer Ball because I flip bad sometimes. Uh, four Ultra Ball. And then our supporter lineup is a two, two, three, four. Um, so Cynthia, Erica, and Lily. We're trying to get turn one Lily. Comes down to that pretty simply. Um, and then after that, you can kind of mix up whether you want more Cynthia's, more Erica's, or, or an even mix. Um, sort of any option there is okay. And if you prefer a different sort of draw system, that's probably fine too. Uh, I could even see going down on the Lilies a little bit. I respected the initial list with how it did it, but I could see going down and going to more draw over here. Three Guzma lets you select a target uh, while preventing your opponent from doing the same thing to you, so people try to store up something on the bench waiting for you to get Blastoise active, and you just go, oh, bam, 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 attach five energies, Guzma, you're gone. Uh, so different options here. Uh, we have the Mew, I like the Mew, I think Mew is really strong here. 
but another really strong card because you're removing your energies anyway with Blastoise. Max Potion. Uh, this seems to be the, the the 60th card that different lists, Pablo's list when he was playing it, played Max Potion instead of Mew. Um, I think either is a good option. I think Mew, if you are expecting there to be any significant amount of spread or any significant amount of people around, Mew needs to take priority. If not, then Max Potion is good, because it's fairly difficult for a lot of decks to KO Blastoise without you outspeeding them, even though you're stage 2. Uh, other possibilities. We're playing a pretty thick evolution line, and this might actually be a deck where Lure Ball could work. Let's pull it up real quick, so I can remind you what it does. Close rotation is probably going to be a staple in any evolution deck. So if you flip coins, yes, it's like timer ball in that fashion. But you get to pull out evolution Pokemon from your discard. So it lets you reuse Blastoise, lets you reuse your War Tortles, uh, lets you keep going. This could be something that might replace Rescue Stretcher. Um, depending on how likely you are to need to recycle. Lele and or Mew. Uh, if you're just getting back the evolutions. I, actually, I think of that. You're always going to need to get back the Squirtles as well. So, uh, it could see some play. It's not going to replace your Rescue Surgery. Uh, obviously, a Dedenna GX is going to help you move that much faster. So, that would be good to have in here if you can find the room. But bench space is tight because we do want to have lines developing to replace either Blastoise or Blastoise GX if and then they get knocked out. Probably want to have a Vulpix that's done the Nine Tails thing and helps get set up quicker. And a Mew that doesn't leave a lot of room for you know, sticking the Dene down, and it sounds like we're too tight. If you can find the room, great. I like it, but. That's not a priority in my mind. Uh, other than that, I love Ditto so much from the Lacephal Index that we've been looking at. I want to find a way to make Ditto work here, which also ramps up my desire for the Rainbow Energy. Uh, it gives us so much flexibility. And I think any deck that can accelerate energy quickly should take a look at that Ditto, because it's so strong. Uh, but I haven't yet figured out how to make it work in this deck. Ditto may become the like you know, last last quarter, a couple quarters ago, I guess. Uh, Shed Ninja was like the level five thing with Blacephalon, first of all, and then uh, there were various other decks we threw it into. But it uh, wouldn't be bad if we could make Ditto the level five thing this time around. Uh, if, if I come up with that, I'll at least post a screenshot of how to fit it in here and an explanation of how it works best. Uh, otherwise, with that, this has been Jeffrey JGB 146 Blake with the Blastoise JX deck profile. Uh, we'll be back again with more content from Team Level 5 in the near future. Okay.